for $18.99, getting all this, this is a pretty phenomenal deal. This is Orange County. With a population of over 3 million, this region of Southern California covers many cities from Buena Park to Irvine, home of Disneyland and home to many great eateries. Have you been? Hey there, this is Steve from Rockstar Eater and in this episode, I'm gonna be taking you on my epic 100 hour journey through the food scene of Orange County, California. In this full documentary, I'm gonna concentrate specifically on all you can eat buffets and show you all the best places to eat them around OC. So get ready for a crazy viewing experience because this is gonna be the biggest Orange County all-you-can-eat buffet tour that you're gonna find anywhere on YouTube. And also if you're new to this channel, take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't wanna miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And with that being said, let's go to Orange County. The first spot is Lux Buffet, which is the biggest AYC buffet restaurant in Orange County. It is a Vegas style buffet in Westminster that specializes in all kinds of foods. On Sundays, the menu includes AYC lobster tails for $40 a person. So I would say Sunday is definitely the day to show up if you want to get the fullest seafood experience at Lux Buffet. Well, let's see some of the awesome selections they have here, like the coconut shrimp, and then we got the breaded shrimp, and then the chicken sticks, which look very awesome. Ooh, pecking duck dinner. This looks very fresh. I'm definitely gonna get that. And then the steam fish. I always like that. Some sort of a white fish they got going on here. Garlic scallops with vermicelli. Haven't seen that before. I think I'll definitely try that. And some baked salmon. All right, that looks pretty cool. Uh, baked crab meat. All looks so good. Oh yeah, spicy salmon. A lot more hot food so it doesn't end. Let me show you what they got here. Uh, seafood delight, looks like it's shrimp and some broccolis, imitation crab meat. All right, crispy soulfish. This looks very delicious. Yeah, I'll definitely get that. Orange chicken, okay. If you are orange chicken fan, they got you covered right here. And they have the beef and broccoli. So yes, they do have some Chinese influences in this buffet. Sauteed mushrooms with abalone. Wow, that sounds fancy. And a clam with black bean sauce. That's always an Asian classic. Crawfish dinner, very popular in buffets. Okay, now we're moving on to some Chinese vegetables. Chinese style vegetables. And green beans. Uh, fried pepper, shrimp, and chicken. Okay, chow mein, if you love it, I'm not gonna get it, but a lot of people do, so they have it here. Fried rice, pot stickers. This is the southern pork ribs they got going on here, which is awesome. Okay, here's the main event right here on Sundays, the baked lobster. Fried wings, french fries. Ah, let's see, we got some sesame balls and egg rolls. Ooh, this is pretty cool. They got dim sum here as well. They got the chashu ball, and I think that's sticky rice. I believe so. And some uh, pork shumai. Look at that, they even have chicken feet here. That's crazy, okay. Some sort of a fish ball soup. And this is uh, lobster soup. Okay, that sounds good. Anything lobster sounds good to me. Okay, hot and sour soup. That's an Asian classic right there. Another classic egg drop soup. Uh, let's see, miso soup. Okay, another one of the main eventers, the crab legs. Definitely get this when you're here. And next to it, for sure, that's the raw oysters. And they also have mussels. Yes, I'm gonna definitely get plenty of those oysters. Wow, all right, nice. They have this butter machine, and this is for the crab legs, so yes, you, uh, I guess, dispense the butter just like that. Oh, that's so cool. I am starting off hot. So this is what I'm gonna do is start from the top and then I'm gonna work my way down because you want to fill up your stomach space on all the really nice expensive things. Crab legs, lobster, 
and raw oysters. Can't get any better than that, right? Mmm. Wow, those oysters are good. It's pretty fresh. Obviously, you want the oysters to be fresh, right? Otherwise, how are you going to eat them? You're not going to eat some non-fresh oysters that could poison you. So yeah, the oysters are definitely a safe bet here. They're really good. So if you love oysters, definitely take advantage of them up there because they got a lot of these oysters up there. The lobster is really what you have to spend most of your time eating because this is the most expensive thing that you can find in the restaurant. Mm. This actually has a very nice chew to it, which is pretty awesome and I love the that mayo sauce that's over it, which I think they bake it before they serve it in that line. Now lobsters, they only give one at a time each time you go up, but I would say go up as many times as you can so you can get this. It's just pure awesomeness. And now moving on to these crab legs, okay, very Vegas style. You definitely need to get your money's worth on this. And I noticed that these crab legs are so like sharp. Whoa, so yeah, you gotta be careful on these things so that you don't uh, poke yourself. Ah. All right, I got it. I got it, I got it. Yes. And once again, butter, gotta have butter. Oh, that butter, it really reminds me of the butter they put on the popcorn in movie theaters. It's such a rich tasting butter. Very good tasting. Butter, lemon. That's what you want to focus on when you come here. It's just all you can eat. Crabs. A lot of water in here. You got to be careful. Yep. More butter. I like those crabs because they're so chilled. So refreshing. And the meat, very juicy. You see that? That's the mountain of crab legs and oysters that I just finished off. But I'm not stopping here because this is a buffet, which means that I gotta go up and eat more. I'm obligated to. If I get some of this duck. This garlic scallop looks very interesting too. Oh yeah, more lobsters. Oh yeah, definitely gotta get your money's worth. Now here's something that's worth mentioning too. They also have Brazilian barbecue here. All right, got some churrasco action. Let's try it. Wow, mashed potatoes. Okay, yes, I'm gonna try the beef. Oh yeah, look at that, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? All right, there we go. Just letting you know, guys, they also have a teppanyaki section here as well where you can pretty much pick out your favorite noodles and proteins and vegetables and they'll cook it on the teppan grill. And yes, maybe the chef is talented enough to do some Benihana tricks for you. Yeah, it's quite a show. So if you're into that, definitely get it. I don't think I'm gonna get it today because I wanna save my stomach room for other stuff, but yeah, they do have it here, just letting you know. This one catches my eye immediately, this garlic abalone with vermicelli. I don't think I've ever seen noodles on top of a scallop shell before. That is crazy, that's like, that's, that's creative, yeah. That's a very interesting combination. You feel like you're eating um, some sort of a noodle dish with a piece of scallop that has that garlicky kind of salty flavor to it. I think it works. Now here's an item that I want to try. Ooh, the pecking duck. Oh, wow. Wow, this is actually better than I thought. <laughs> It's good, yeah. The skin is good. The meat is fairly moist too. Very pleasant tasting pecking duck. I don't know what kind of cut it is. I honestly don't remember. It's not picanha, that's for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the beef itself has a very pleasant taste to it. I like the marination on it. But this one, I think it's been sitting there for some time, which is why it's been cooked well done. Yeah, but this is something, get medium. If they have it up there medium, it would actually taste really good. So be sure to request the chef. I always like to eat sausages at Brazilian restaurants. 
Even at buffets, why not give it a shot, right? Wow, that's actually pretty good. It's very soft inside. That's how I like it. Not tough at all. The top is kind of crispy, and the inside is very soft. And it has pretty good flavor, too. Okay, and here we go with the lobster once again. I can't get enough of this. I'm stressing this. You got to eat this when you come here because this is probably the best item you're going to get here at this restaurant. Any buffet that serves lobster is like a good buffet. You should eat all the lobsters that you can. Mm. How many of these can you eat if you're at a buffet? Drop that comment. I want to hear your story. They got a lot of sushi here as well, which is typical of a lot of Asian inspired buffets. California roll, spicy tuna roll, spicy cooked salmon roll, uh, vegetable roll, and a crunchy roll. Yes, if you love sushi rolls, you're gonna have a blast here. Crab meat roll, spicy salmon roll, Philadelphia roll, salmon roll, rainbow roll, Oh yeah, we're, we're just going through the entire menu. Tempura roll, egg, uh, crab meat sushi, bean curd, shrimp. Does this look exciting to you guys? It does to me. Saba, which is like mackerel, salmon sushi, and of course ginger and wasabi. They also got sashimi as well, salmon sashimi, Tuna sashimi, uh, let's see, saba sashimi, okay, mackerel, and adamami, okay. <laughs> Moving on to round number three. Now this is my sushi round, sushi rolls, and of course I had to get some more of these lobsters because like I said, that's the thing you gotta get when you come here. Definitely not gonna get something like out of a high-end omakase sushi restaurant, but still, I mean, it's, it's enjoyable. So in that sense, you can just sit and you can just enjoy it. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm kind of getting full right now, but like I said, I want to get my money's worth, so I'm definitely going to eat more of these lobsters. I think this is my eighth piece of lobster. Not a whole lobster, eighth um, of the half slice. So that means I've had about four lobsters already. These aren't like those really huge lobsters, more kind of like the small size lobsters. But still, small lobsters, better than no lobsters, right? So they do have a dessert bar here. It's not the biggest dessert bar I've seen, but still, some dessert is better than no dessert, I guess. Ah, they don't have labels on this. I don't really know what is what. This is like some sort of, maybe like coffee type of a cake, I think, okay. And uh, this looks like coconut. Yeah, maybe coconut cake or something. Oh, this one's coconut. Okay, got it. Hey, every buffet has a fruit section. Looks like you got some classic choices. Pineapple, watermelon, orange, cantaloupe, and uh, honeydew, I think. Wow, what is this? They got these what's called flavored sticks. Cherry flavored, uh, orange flavored, yeah, chocolate flavored. Strawberry flavor, raspberry flavor. Do you think I should get one of these? I don't know. What a great way to end off this buffet, seriously. With some awesome dessert cakes, and then also Jello, which is something that I always like to get at buffets. If I were you, definitely stick with the lobsters, the oysters, the crabs, you can't go wrong with that. It's uh, pretty good here, and they only offer that on Sundays. So definitely get here on Sunday, even if you have to pay a little bit more for the meal because those are what makes your experience. I can't really say what the food is like during the rest of the days, but definitely if you come here on a Sunday, those are the three things you should get. The second buffet I went to for dinner is Songhak, which is an all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue restaurant in Tustin. It is one of few in OC that has a buffet station. And Songhak has plenty of meats lined up at these stations. This is probably my favorite Korean barbecue buffet in Orange County, especially if you go for their $21.99 lunch special. You know how I'm gonna start off? I'm just gonna put everything on this grill. Yes, everything. 
Everything. I'm hungry. Woo! Okay. Watch it go. Since this is very thinly sliced, that means it's not going to take that long for it to cook. Very soon it should be done. But to me, most important thing is the quality of the meat. That's what I'm looking for. And I heard that this place does deliver. So I do have pretty good expectations about the food here. Whoa, that's pretty good. It's very tender and it uh, has a really good amount of fat content on it. Okay, pretty solid stuff. All right, and they also brought out the, the cheese and the corn. Yeah, I didn't know this was part of the meal, okay. So with the cheese, you cook it on top, it's supposed to melt with the corn inside. I guess that's kind of like the new trend in Korean barbecue these days. But I think it's pretty cool. Where's that beef belly? <laughs> it looks kind of hard to tell because once it all cooks, the beef belly and the brisket, they kind of look the same. But I think this is it right here. Yeah, that one is it. You can tell because it's kind of chewier and fattier. You know the fat part of the beef? You taste more of that. Ooh, kind of a rich tasting beef, I like it. I think this is the first time I'm eating Korean barbecue of any kind in Orange County, like near the Irvine area. Wow, because I've always eat it in the Koreatown area, Los Angeles. But today, first time here. So the pork belly, I always get it when it's the thicker slice. With the pork, I would recommend the salt, maybe the spicy sauce if you're into that. But all of these thin slices, it's good because it's very easy to chew on. It cooks really quickly. And I think it always is like solid. So good stuff. The buffet bar is in the center of the restaurant. It looks like there's about like four or five stations. Beginning with the marinated pork bulgogi. Very self-explanatory. It's the pork version of the beef bulgogi. Honey mustard chicken. I like this one. I tried it one time at another restaurant. Uh, yummy yum garlic butter premium chicken. That looks appetizing. And also the same one, but with the pork belly. Yum. Traditional Korean spicy pork bulgogi. So popular, they got two of them here. And this one is pretty unique. Texas prime bourbon beef bulgogi. Never had this one, it's not traditional, but it's probably still very good. Hawaiian barbecue beef bulgogi. All right, got that Hawaiian twist. Then moving on to the other station, marinated prime beef bulgogi. Okay, this is a big favorite. And pork belly, or in Korean, samgyeopsal. This is the premium spicy Korean marinated chicken. Okay, chicken, as well as pork belly. And this is the premium carby marinated pork belly. They got a lot of pork selections here. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, premium tamari teriyaki chicken. Yeah, this looks like teriyaki, the sauce. This one is the premium pork belly with marinated chili sauce. And I think that's all for the meats. And then from here you have all the veggies like onions, zucchini, macaroni salad, and pickled jalapeno. On the other side, it's pretty much plates and cups and chopsticks if you need it. But then if you come here, oh, it's kind of an empty bar, but there is something here. This is rice paper, the wrap for your Korean barbecue. Okay. All right, the other station. Ooh, what do we got here? Flavorful fried rice. Okay, got some Chinese influence here. And japchae. I have this at my table. This is always a good side appetizer. And the stir fish cake, yum. And in the back, there is a section that has the white rice. So if you like white rice, they got it here. You see? Ooh, all right, I like white rice. I wanna let you guys know that you can order a la carte from the menu too. So it's not like everything is all you can eat. But keep in mind, if you go with the a la carte option, you cannot go up there to the buffet bar and take advantage of that. So definitely, do the buffet if you want all you can eat. So now, okay, 
So this is some of the things from the bar up there, like the pork, spicy pork, and uh, chicken, and the beef bulgogi. Man, it is hot. See, it's really cooking. I gotta tell you, this, especially if it's marinated, it's gonna smoke up pretty fast. The grill is gonna burn, so keep watch over it. But I think it's done. Definitely the beef is done. I know that for sure. <coughs> I think I might have cooked it a little bit too long. But still, it's pretty tasty. Honestly, I don't eat it that often, but since it's up there and it looked very pretty, so I went for it. This is the one I am very excited to try. Yeah, that one's good. This one is so good. Sweet, salty, and spicy all at the same time. Very intense flavors that make this meat enjoyable. And pretty soft too. I would say this is one of my favorite things up there at the buffet bar. But then again, I only picked three, such as this one. The chicken, garlic butter chicken, I think. Okay. That chicken is more tender than I thought. I didn't really know what to expect because I don't eat chicken that often in Korean barbecue restaurants. It's really not the choice of, I guess, Koreans when they eat at Korean barbecue. But it's tasty though. I love the marination, just like it sounds. The meat, big plus because it is tender and a pretty juicy meat as well. So it seems like what I had up there so far at the bar is pretty safe. I think for a cold day, it's good to have something like this, the kimchi stew, kimchi chige. Ah, oh, that's like a home cooked meal right there. It's just a little bit spicy, but hey, you pair it with some rice. To me, you got a complete meal. Maybe I'll try this, uh, what's this, Texas beef bulgogi? Texas bourbon beef bulgogi. Hmm, kind of sweet. Is that supposed to be a bourbon flavor that I'm tasting? I'm not sure. I mean, it definitely still tastes Asian, that's for sure. Pretty good marination. I like it. It's like sweet, kind of salty. I suppose if they, if they were to ever open this restaurant in Texas, this could be the signature Texas uh, Korean barbecue dish. But then there's also this chicken here, which also looks pretty groovy. You definitely taste that mustard flavor and a little bit of that sweetness of the honey, I would say. I have no complaints whatsoever. It's actually pretty solid. Uh, of course, you cannot compare it to eating at those a la carte upscale Korean barbecue restaurants, but for what you're paying and what you're getting, it's actually pretty good. I'm more into the meats that come from the kitchen, like the simpler stuff, because that's just more of what I grew up eating but if you're really into that heavily marinated intense meats they got a lot of them up there in the bar it's all you can eat so really have at it whether you come for lunch or you come for happy hour or for dinner um, you're gonna get some pretty awesome choices here so remember that the third buffet is a truly unique one 98 shabu and grill which is a vietnamese fusion restaurant in westminster this restaurant offers a daily vietnamese style buffet which also includes hot pot and Korean style barbecue. Now here is one spot you should come to with a very big appetite because you're gonna be eating a lot of Asian food here. This is all for the hot pot right here, ingredients you can put in. For our first one, we have cabbage right here, standard cabbage you can put in the soup. Mm -hmm. Right up here is chrysanthemum. Okay. Yep. Next is watercress, a lot uh -huh. of people love putting that in. And then as well as ong choy, which is the Chinese water plant right here. <laughs> Next up, we have the two uh, noodles right here. We have egg noodle, and we have the vermicelli noodles right here. Mm -hmm. If we move back a little, more ingredients. We have the squash. Oh, this pumpkin. one. Yep. Okay, pumpkin. No problem. We have carrots right here, standard carrots, cuts of taro. Mm -hmm. I also have rice bean sprouts, cuts of mushrooms, and then we have tofu over here soft tofu and then firm uh, fried style tofu as well as if people enjoy it the instant noodle packs 
And I guess this is the uh, protein section, right? Yes, this is the protein section for our hot pot right here. First up is swally fish fillet, so nice cuts of fish. Over here, they may have little bones, but they're a good cut of meat. That is the sea bass. Mmm. Moving on, we do have our shrimp right here. Little shrimp. Next is the squid cuts right here, little cuts of squid. As well as right next to it, right next to it is salmon. Well, not only that, I have sea snail, the periwinkle kind in the shell. Okay. And then fish balls over here. Mm. And moving on to the top layer, I have the imitation crab meat. Also have more uh, tofu pieces right there. As well as this is the periwinkle meat, but without the shell. So people enjoy it like that. Okay. Next up is crawfish. And from there, we have our mussels, standard clams, and one of our popular ones, the razor clam. Uh, these three meats uh, around here are actually for the hot pot as well. You can just cook them right into the soup, take it out, and dip them with your favorite sauce. Ah. So up here we have lamb meat. Down here, pork loin cuts. And then I have the beef chuck cuts right here. Nice. Now, moving on to the grills, I have marinated spicy salmon, the spicy shrimp. They're all marinated in the same kind of spicy sauce. Mm -hmm. So we also have that as spicy swally cut fish mm -hmm. and spicy squid. The marinated pork slices right there, pork cuts, beef bagogi, as well as our Korean short rib. Look at that. Yeah. We have pork bagogi right here and our spicy pork belly. Wow, very Korean. And over here is some little dishes for appetizers. These are our Vietnamese style salads. So down here we have papaya salad, bitter melon salad, and moving upwards we have the mango salad with different cuts of meat and some shrimp in there, as well as the taro salad as well. And then we have a little section for kimchi if people enjoy that too. Uh huh. Moving on to the side is where we typically have a little dessert at the end of the meal. So these are little uh, gel gelatin cubes with uh, pandan leaf flavored into them. Downwards we have just cuts of oranges. And then here we have the Vietnamese style dessert, the jia, kind of like the refreshing uh, dessert soup in a sense. So two different flavors, one with more coconut milk and the one is more grass jelly based. Next up, we have hot foods right here. And this is mostly for appetizers as well as, you know, little snacks. So we have a lot out. We have egg rolls, moving down the sesame balls, as well as little uh, fried tofu pieces. Mm -hmm. Here we have a special, which is the snow crab legs right there. Oh. Those are seasonal, so depending on what day you come by, you, you'll get them. Okay. We have some fried uh, dessert buns right here. Mm -hmm. And on the outside, actually, we have a lot out today, we have uh, shrimp and sweet potato and they're fried together. Little fried uh, ragoon pieces. Okay, wonton. Yep. And we have the uh, seared pork with the rice noodles around. around. Uh huh. Fried shrimp right here. Here we have some stewed uh, sea snails with some lemongrass flavoring. This is periwinkle with spicy chili marinade, as well as spicy garlic chicken wings. And we have a special right here, the traditional uh, Vietnamese rice cake. And on top of it, we have a little uh, clam meat filling, so you can put uh, together on some rice or any fried little dough you get. We have more uh, stewed clams with basil in there. We have the standard chow mein, mixed with all those vegetables and meat. We have mussels up here, some fried rice. I have fried tofu, and just plain white rice for everybody who enjoys that. The small blue crabs right here, all the fried with nice spicy marinade as well, so you just take and suck the meat off. And this is all the uh, sauce uh, condiment section, right? Yep, all the sauces here for hot pot and for the grill as well. So if you want to mix things together, so definitely for round number one, I'm going to focus on the hot pot. I got everything from the veggies to the meats to the seafood. 
So for the hot pot base, there's only two. The one on the right side, I think that's like a beef type of a broth, and to the left, that's a pork-based broth, but it's supposed to be Thai style, so it might have that lemongrass flavor. The good news about this restaurant is that you can eat here individually, so if you come by yourself and you want the hot pot or the barbecue or both, you can do it and have fun all by yourself. And based on the menu selections, it looks like this restaurant is more of an Asian fusion restaurant. It's not completely Korean, not completely Chinese, not completely Vietnamese either, but it is technically a Vietnamese restaurant because there's a lot of Vietnamese hot foods, staff is Vietnamese, and we're in Little Saigon. So this is definitely gonna be one of the most unique food experiences you're gonna find here in the OC. Now my big dilemma is where exactly to put all my food because there's the regular side, non-spicy, but then there's also the spicy side. So it's kind of like throwing a little bit of everything into both sides, I guess. Or better yet, maybe I should just toss everything in. Ah, very simple, right? Oh yeah. Well, I know for sure that the beef doesn't take too long to cook. So just put it in there for maybe about 15, 20 seconds and it's all good. Okay, so off to a good start. That's a beef chuck, which is very popular in a lot of hot pot and shabu shabu restaurants. But I'm very curious to see what the seafood tastes like because after all, this is a seafood buffet. Mm, tastes just like a salmon. Very soft and buttery. How interesting. And that sauce, is really what gives it that hot pot flavor. All right, so for sure, you definitely need to get the salmon here. That's a pretty good salmon. Did I also tell you they have razor clams up there? Wow, nice and chewy. Oh, it's quite delicious. I really love razor clams, and you'll notice that it's a very popular food, especially around here in Westminster at a lot of these Vietnamese restaurants. So with these sea snails, it's kind of hard to get the meat out, which is a good thing that they supply you with these toothpicks to make it easier. Otherwise, it's gonna be a very difficult journey. Wow, look at that, all that work for just this little piece of meat right there, okay. All right, let's see what this tastes like. Wow, that's a little bit hard to bite into. Is it because I cooked these too long? I don't know. Wow, it's hot. These shells are so hot. Ugh. But let me tell you, if you don't want to do all the work of cooking and trying to pick that little thing out, they do have the other snails that are already pulled out for you. So this makes it kind of easy, right? Ooh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, I think I much prefer the ones that are already pulled out. These other ones, I mean, they're still nice to eat on, but these are so much bigger. Also, first time trying uh, sea bass as part of a hot pot meal. Oh, it's hot. Wow, I think I found my new favorite item up there. It's like so buttery and soft. And with these foods, you have to kind of watch them because you don't want to cook them way too long. So for round number two, I think I'm going to focus now on this barbecue section because the Korean in me is very curious to try stuff like this. They give you this butter so that you can butter up your grill. Let's see, ah, okay. All right, got it. Oh, that's very nice. So the barbecue, I decided to get a lot of the traditional ones that you can find in Korean restaurants like bulgogi and karbi. But then it's not completely cream because you have the addition of stuff like the marinated salmon, which is definitely not Korean, but I'm still gonna try it. There we go. Gonna put pretty much everything on. Yeah, why not? Let's just put everything on. I think this is the first time I've had a Korean style barbecue in a Vietnamese restaurant. Okay, this is pretty interesting. Okay, not bad. I would say it tastes more along the lines of something that you would eat in a Korean all-you-can-eat barbecue restaurant. But still, they got it up there. It's not cheap, 
these short ribs. So that just the fact that they have it available as one of the options is a good sign. I mean, it just shows that's the buffet you gotta be at. I think this is the beef bulgogi. I'm not too sure because I know that I got pork as well. Yeah, I think it's the beef. I like the fact that it's as sweet as Korean barbecue meat. So yeah, it pretty much tastes like Korean barbecue. Now this is something that's pretty cool, the salmon. This I have not had in a Korean barbecue, nor have I had it in a Japanese yakiniku restaurant. That is like melt in your mouth. I feel that that salmon is really the way to go here. Whether it's the barbecue or in the hot pot, it tastes good both ways. It's just amazing. It's, it's fresh and it's so soft and buttery. Good stuff. So I hope you guys do like salmon because they got a lot of it up there. So take advantage of it. I definitely want to try the hot foods before I get out of here because I rarely try Vietnamese buffet foods. So yeah, I'm going to do it. Beginning with uh, egg rolls. Oh wow, this looks pretty interesting. I think I'll try it. A lot of crabs. Definitely going to get this. I am so sad because they are out of the crab legs. I heard that once it came out, all the customers pretty much got it and they ran out for the night. <sighs> but there's still these other crabs, these blue crabs that are deep fried. These, I like actually because they're very easy to eat. You don't have to crack them and you know, get your hands dirty. Whoa, this is good. Wow, it's even better than I thought. Okay, I didn't expect this. I thought these were gonna be like the crabs you find at those Asian Chinese buffets. This thing really is crispy and it melts in your mouth. I think you can actually eat the whole thing. Yeah, it's almost like eating a soft shell crab. Oh, this is good. And speaking of fried, there is this other very unique one I've never seen before. If you didn't tell me what this thing was, I don't think I would have guessed it. So yeah, it's pretty much sweet potato and there's shrimp inside and I kind of do taste that. This is a good combination. I mean, anything that's fried like this, I like. So this, when I saw it, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting it. Can't get enough of the fried food. You see, these are the egg rolls. It would have been cool if I had the veggies where I could wrap it over and put in the fish sauce. I think they might have it up there. I didn't check. Oh, they got egg rolls here. That's pretty cool. They've got a lot of fried foods up there. I think if you are really into deep fried foods, you're gonna have a blast here at this buffet. Very similar to the ones I've had in those Chinese restaurants, you know, those salt and pepper shrimp. You can eat the whole thing so you don't have to peel the shell off. Just pop it in your mouth and you're good to go. I pretty much reached my full point, so I'm gonna end it out with some desserts. They look good though. I wanted to try this from the very beginning. And I think you self-serve with these cups. Coconut type of milk dessert, which looks pretty awesome. Very milky and thick and coconut flavor. That's my Asian dessert right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Between the hot pot and the barbecue, I heard that more customers like to go the hot pot route. Now the barbecue, even though it's good, I feel that you can find this in a lot of Korean barbecue, all you can eat buffet restaurants. I mean, I can kind of say the same thing about the hot pot as well, but what's cool about this hot pot is that they have so many seafood selections up there. So it truly is a seafood buffet restaurant. And all the hot dishes, the Vietnamese hot foods up there are also pretty killer. So if you happen to be around here in this area and you're looking specifically for a Vietnamese themed buffet, 98 Shabu Grill is gonna be your best bet. So yeah, definitely come on by here. Started my day for my fourth buffet experience at Oishi Shabu, which is an all you can eat hot pot restaurant in Irvine. You can find a sizable buffet station full of veggies, appetizers, and seafood, along with Shabu meat slices that includes American Wagyu. This is one of the most premium all-you-can-eat hot pot restaurants you're gonna find in Orange County. So this is a restaurant to definitely hit up. Yeah, since I drove all the way out here to Irvine, I think I'm gonna do this today.
So here is the entire buffet line and they do label everything so you know exactly what you're getting. And before I go through the selections, I wanna let you know that all the plates are underneath here. All the plates and all the little bowls for your sauces. Okay, so let's go through them. We first got some sesame red bean ball, which is very popular to find in Asian buffets. And then, ooh, this is pretty cool. Taco yaki. I think this is the first time I've seen this in a buffet of any kind. That's pretty cool. And then we have some of these vegetable egg rolls. All right, very Asian. And then we have some fried rice action going on here. Almost kind of like a curry colored. And then moving on, we have some edamame and some oranges. And this one is a seaweed salad and some spicy cucumber salad. And then moving on to this section, this is where we have a lot of the garnishments. We have like onions and we have a chopped a cilantro and even jalapeno. We have the sauces, four different sauces, the goma and the tangy chili. Yeah, that looks like chili and peanut sesame along with the Oishi signature. And then moving to this side, we have some Napa cabbage. Got to have your greens along with some corn and some sliced carrots and bok choy as well as some bean sprouts. And then we got some broccoli, very healthy and some spinach. So that's pretty much most of the veggies. And then we have this other stuff, like we got some radishes. Uh, we have some squash. I think that's yams or, yeah, sweet potato actually. Yeah, sweet potato, zucchini, and uh, lotus root. And now we're pretty much on to all the seafoods. See, we got some tilapia. It's filled on both sides. We got a lot of shrimp going on here, shrimp action, and also some mussels and some clams and some octopus and some squid. And that right there is spam. Okay, and then we have a kamaboko and then we have imitation crab and this is the woodier mushrooms some fried tofu, I always like this. And then moving on, we got the Itoyori fish balls right there. Never heard of it, but I'll try it. Some swai fish balls. We got some lobster balls here. And then we also have this unique thing called the konyaku knots and also vermicelli noodles and some taro. Yeah, lots of taro here. Tofu, gotta have tofu. Baby corn and instant ramen. Okay, that's always good. And then we have some fish tofu. We have some quail and then eggs. And then moving on to this side, chicken dumpling. Got some udon noodles. And we got some beach mushroom and enoki mushroom. And then finally, oyster mushroom. Yeah, that's almost 50. And of course, you're probably asking, what are the broths here? It looks like they have uh, five different kinds. The miso or the spicy miso, sukiyaki, tom yum, tonkotsu, like the ramen. I heard the most popular one is the spicy miso, the traditional soybean. And by the way, this restaurant is also near UC Irvine. So if you are a student that's attending that university, you got a great spot to come here to eat some all you can eat, shabu shabu hot pot and vegetarian friendly too. So there's a lot of good things going for this restaurant. This is the spicy miso broth base. And you know what you'll notice is that these hot pots are so individually portioned. I mean, look at this, look how small this thing is. So it's not like that huge hot pot they give you in most shabu shabu and hot pot restaurants. I mean, this is really so good for one person. While they're preparing the meat, uh, gonna just I guess, start off with the appetizers, right? What else am I gonna do in the meantime? Oh, this is good. I just like eating takoyaki, any type of restaurant I go to. And these pot stickers, look at that, they're deep fried. Looks pretty cool, huh? Mmm, crispy. Oh yeah. 
Nothing like some nice, deep fried, crispy gyoza. Off to a good start. And did I mention that they do have these robot servers at this restaurant? Oh yeah, love the bow tie. So presentable. Oh yeah, and that's all my meat right there. Yes. See the Wagyu selection? Pretty cool. They got the top blade Wagyu, and this one is the beef brisket Wagyu, short rib Wagyu, the Kabi Ai Wagyu. That is uh, pork belly, not Wagyu, but very uh, high grade. They do have stuff like abalone on the menu too. Yep, high-end stuff when you pay $55. Cook it for only a short amount of time. You see, after about like 10 seconds, maybe not even 10 seconds, this thing is done. And I think for this one, I'm gonna start off with some of that peanut sauce. Yes, yes. Wow, that thing just melts in your mouth. It's so tender. And this, the uh, soup broth, it is a little bit spicy. So what you're gonna get is like a peanutty kind of spicy flavor. This is how you want your shabu shabu meat. It has to be tender because if it's not, it's gonna kind of ruin your experience. So my recommendation is if you're willing to pay over $50, go with the Wagyu beef route. I think that's the way to go. To me, my go-to items in a hot pot restaurant is always cabbage and bok choy. Sometimes spinach, I like to keep it that simple. Mm. That house special sauce is really good. It's like some so sort of a soy sauce flavor. And I heard that the beef brisket is also really a killer thing here. So yeah, let's do it, beef brisket. Yeah, totally. It works really good with all kinds of restaurants, like Korean barbecue, hot pot. It's one of those things that you just cannot miss out on. There's also this one right here, the short rib Wagyu. You know, after a while, they're kind of indistinguishable. It seems like every one of them is soft, tender, like melts in your mouth. I'm not saying that's bad, but I mean, to me, maybe I'm just not a Wagyu beef connoisseur. That pork belly is so melt in your mouth. But then again, it's very thinly sliced. So that's a good thing. I think it's to your advantage that a lot of these are fairly thinly sliced because if it's too thick sliced, it's kind of off turning as hot pot food unless it's very tender. Everything so far is good, very good. Hmm, crunchy. Very expensive stuff. So don't forget the abalone if you get all this other Wagyu beef too. You really want to take advantage of it since it's a buffet, so get your money's worth, I would say. All right, round number two, here we go. For sure, gotta get more Napa cabbage. Maybe I'll get some spinach this time around. Spinach is good for you. Very excited to be eating more food, and I want to let you know that these items you'll find as part of the dinner buffet menu, but if you go with the Wagyu beef $55 deal, They'll bring this out to you from the kitchen. So just letting you know, if you don't see it out there, but you paid for the dinner menu or the Wagyu, you'll get the seafood, like the crabs and even the chicken wings. Oh, it's, yeah, it is good. What I notice is that this chicken is very juicy and tender. Because sometimes when you eat fried chicken, you know how it can be very crispy on top, but inside it's, it's kind of dry. Not with this one. So juicy inside, with kind of a curry flavored. So this is their house special recipe that you find on the dinner menu. I think my salmon is just about cooked. This one, you don't wanna you know, cook it too long. You want it to be really soft, like buttery. Buttery indeed. It's like a piece of butter in your mouth. Salmon butter. I think putting it in that sauce makes it even better. I seriously think the dinner menu is worth it. Like the fried chicken, the melt in your mouth salmon. It's like, how could you go wrong with that? And it's from, a, you know, Alaska too. It's like really good quality salmon. See all the meat is right there by the shoulder. I don't know about you guys, but I like to max these out whenever I'm at buffets. This is where the money's at right here. 
along with the Wagyu beef, of course. And not forget about the shrimp when you come to this restaurant. Yes, you have to peel it, but they'll give you gloves. The key to the shrimp is you have to cook it where it's just about right so that it has a beautiful crunchiness all around. That's fresh. Definitely stockpile on the shrimp too. Like shrimp, crab, all those good seafood here. So this is actually the first all-you-can-eat hot pot restaurant that I've been to anywhere in Orange County. It's one of the highest rated ones too, and I can see why. Their food is pretty killer. Definitely go with like the beef brisket, the beef belly, some of my favorites here, and that salmon. Wow, just totally melts in your mouth. I mean, even the crab, you can't go wrong with that too. So yeah, come here to this spot in Irvine. It, great parking here. It's close to UC Irvine. It's very clean. The staff here is pretty awesome. You could go with the lunch menu, but I would recommend go with either the dinner menu or if you want to upgrade it, go with the Wagyu menu so you can have all that melt in your mouth beef. If you're looking for a Korean buffet closer west, then you have to check out Gangnam Station, which is a fairly new all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue spot in Buena Park. The buffet stations are not as big as Songhak, but the meats are pretty high quality. This is another one of my favorite all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue restaurants in Buena Park, which also has a location in Koreatown, LA. What I think I'm gonna do is start off with the meats from the kitchen because those are non-marinated. Like to start off kind of easy before I go to the bar, which is a lot of the marinated meats. So don't go anywhere, guys, because I'm gonna show you everything they got up there, and it's pretty exciting. So here are my kitchen starters. We got the beef belly, which is always the way to go in the Korean barbecue restaurants. And then this is the beef brisket. And then down here we have the pork belly, thinly sliced pork belly. So all of it is thinly sliced. And the good thing is that it will cook pretty quickly since they are thinly sliced. So you gotta watch over this. In just about 30 seconds, it's pretty much done. So don't have the fire on way too high for this. You don't want it to burn. These are your dipping sauces. You have the salt to the left. And that one is the brisket sauce, which is light and sweet, kind of vinegary. And you have the teriyaki sauce, and that one is the uh, spicy sauce. And I have a feeling I'm gonna be using the brisket sauce, not just on the brisket, but everything, because I'm just not used to teriyaki. Mm. Oh, good way to start off Korean barbecue. That thing is so tender. So with brisket, you want to cook it all the way so that it has that crispiness, just a little bit of that on the side. If you have brisket, most of the time, it's a very good item to have at all you can eat Korean barbecue restaurants. Okay, I think out of the two, I definitely like that one better. It's just fattier and crispier. Almost like eating bacon. And that pork belly, you definitely need to cook it all the way, but it's a good thing because it's gonna taste so good. That meat definitely goes good in the, the salt. I think me personally, I like my pork belly that's thicker, like really good quality premium pork belly. But even the thin one too, you know, it's good to snack on because it's so crispy. Even if I didn't have any of that stuff up there at the buffet bar, I would be very content eating the beef belly, the brisket. You can definitely make a Korean barbecue meal just out of this itself. But of course, you guys came here for the buffet bar, so I'm gonna show you that actually right now. You get about 14 different kinds of meats, including the spicy Korean chicken. And then you can also get garlic butter chicken. Oh, I remember this already from the other location. And you also have premium carby pork belly. And here is marinated beef bulgogi. And that one is prime spicy bulgogi if you like it spicy. And down here we got Hawaiian beef bulgogi. And moving on up here is the carby pork bulgogi. And as you can tell, they're all freshly stocked. This is premium pork belly, always the way to go. And of course you need your salads. They got the greens here along with the salad sauce 
And those onions, I believe you put them on the grill because I can't imagine you eat them raw. And then on this side, uh, we got some kimchi and more sliced onions. And that is sliced zucchini. And down here we got macaroni salad that looks delicious. And let's see what we have at this meat station. This is the Hawaiian beef bulgogi, which is a repeat. Okay, and that one is a repeat too. The samgyeopsal, which is premium pork belly. Must mean it's popular. And up here we got authentic spicy pork belly and Hawaiian barbecue pork bulgogi. And that one is honey mustard chicken. That one's pretty good, I like it. And this is the spicy pork belly. As you can tell, they got a lot of spicy stuff here. And up there, if you like teriyaki chicken, more of like that Japanese influence, they got it here. And then marinated beef bulgogi. And I think that's it. So now I'm on this side because it is very smoky on that side. That's where the smoke is going. You want to dress in a way where you don't mind if your clothes smell when you come here because your clothes are gonna kind of, you know, smell after you're done with this meal. So what you'll notice about these meats is that they are much thicker than the ones I got in round number one. So this is gonna take a little while to cook. You see that pork belly is coming out so nice. That's the way you want it. I can't even tell the difference between the chicken, like what is what. I think that one is the garlic butter, because that's kind of like a garlicky taste to it. Oh, the chicken's pretty moist. That's a good thing. I usually don't eat chicken that often when I go to Korean barbecue restaurants, but the chicken here was actually not that bad. So, you know, I'll give it a shot. Okay, that one is a honey mustard. I think the honey mustard one is my favorite chicken dish here. So if you don't know what chicken to get up there, honey mustard is actually the way to go. Unless you're not into that flavor profile, but I would highly recommend it. And you know what else is also pretty good is the pork belly. This is something you can never go wrong with. Woo, Todd. If you've tried the thin one, but you've never tried the thick one before, thick one is the way to go. Oh yeah, you gotta be a man and eat the thick one. Cause this one is really where the money is at. I saved some of this beef belly so that I can cook it and eat it with the ramen that comes with your meal if you request it. Oh yeah, you see that's the ramen right there. Isn't that so cool? Looks like the server is going to show me a pro tip on how to expertly dress your ramen. So what you need to do is cook some kimchi as well as some onion. And all this is eventually going to go into the ramen soup. I guess while I wait for the ramen, I can get to this item, which I forgot about this whole time. But of course you should eat it, your salad. Mm, dressing they use is really good. It's like a creamy and kind of sweet. It's some sort of a house special dressing. So they would take the grill off and then that would go on and that is the pot of water, which will boil. Oh, it's pretty much instant ramen. The shin ramen with the concentration that you put in as well. So just like eating it at home. But the unique thing about this mixture is that it's gonna take the kimchi that we just cooked, such as the grilled kimchi too, so that it can add a very nice flavor to this. All right, and there's the ramen. Yes, shin ramen, which you can get at any Korean market. So it's not just this restaurant. Oh, this is pretty unique. Some cheese on top of ramen. Oh, and there's onions, yep. We were grilling that earlier. I think this is the first time that I've had ramen in a Korean barbecue restaurant. That's the first ever time I've had melted cheese on shin ramen. It's actually pretty good. Now it's like cheesy and kind of nutty and spicy all at the same time. There's like a treasure, so many things going on in here, including the grilled kimchi. Hmm. 
very hot. This instant ramen, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. I mean, even if you want to go as simple as just putting the soup base with the noodles and some of the beef, a lot of customers do that as well. But then if you want to go creative and add some of that grilled kimchi, grilled beef, grilled onions, some cheese, you know, whatever you want in here, you can have like the ultimate ramen feast at your table. Of course, eating here is not like eating at one of those a la carte premium upscale Korean barbecue restaurants, just being honest with you. But if you are going for all you can eat, then this is definitely one of the better all you can eat places I've been to in Southern California. Of course, what would a buffet tour be without Mexican food? at Cocina Azteca, which is a Mexican restaurant in Placentia. They offer a daily lunch buffet for $18.99, which is one of the most affordable AYC buffets in OC. So if you're into delicious and affordable, then this is a Mexican buffet you certainly need to eat at in Orange County. We're gonna have our beans right over here, as well as our rice. Then down here we have a traditional menudo, which is the tripe. And then over here we have chile rojo, which is going to be your spicy pork riblets uh, with nopales, cactus, and onion. It has a little kick to it. It's good, but for spicy fans. Right over here to our other left, we're going to have our beef birria. Usually people do the goat. Ours is going to be more of a beef, more barbacoa style. And then here we have our chile verde, which is going to be our less spicy pork riblets with potato. This one has a lot of flavor, but a little bit less spicy for people like me. Right over here, we're gonna have our pozole. It's gonna be our pork pozole, red. Most some people have a chicken one with the green sauce. Ours is gonna be our traditional pork. Here we're gonna have uh, pollo mole. It's gonna be the pueblano. Uh, gonna be more of a sweet, tangy taste instead of the spicier one. And we have over here we have our traditional chilaquiles, sour cream and uh, cotija cheese, just regular chilaquiles. And then we have a little uh, huevo revuelto, which these two sometimes, depending on the time you come in, they will switch out. And we have the tostadas if you'd like to grab some. And fresh handmade chips. And down here on the cold side, we do have fresh cut oranges, cucumber, pineapple, uh, cantaloupe, uh, melon. And this is more oranges. And then we have a variety of jello. I believe this is going to be like an orange flavor, uh, grape, arroz con leche. This one? Yeah, arroz con leche for this one. This is going to be, I don't know, uh, I think you want to say like a nut type. And this is going to be pineapple and then eggnog, uh, rompompe. The buffet does come with the free tortillas. And what's cool is that they are fresh made tortillas. So they have the flour, they have the corn, and it is one of the popular items to get as part of this buffet. So yes, you're getting fresh quality here. So it looks like the line begins right over here. Yeah, kind of cafeteria style. As well as all your silverware, it's all up here. Knife, fork, spoon. Oh yeah, rice and beans, gotta have it, essential. That looks pretty good, okay. And maybe some of this chili verde, that looks good too. And it's worth mentioning that they do also have this salsa and condiments bar. We got two kinds of salsa here, the green and the red. And we also have some sliced lemon and some diced onions and cilantro. And right up there, we got some uh, jalapeno and let's see, I think that's radish right there and some diced cabbage. It's definitely a very cozy atmosphere. I feel like I've walked into some sort of a Mexican deli. So like I said, they have a full on a la carte menu. So if you're not here during buffet times, you can order straight off the menu. You got some really nice home style Michoacan Mexican food. Look at that tortilla. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. Yes, fresh made, very fresh. That is a big plus. This one's corn. So yeah, you can use this for anything. Like you can wrap meats inside or maybe even dip it into some salsa, give it some flavor. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, totally works. Oh yeah, if you love Mexican food, this is a place to be in OC. Just really hits the spot. I mean, it makes for a complete Mexican meal. So obviously you have to have some rice and beans on it, right? Even though it's kind of a filler food, but it's always so good, even at buffets. I don't know if I've had Rojo Verde before, but look how good it looks. Wow, it looks so tender. Ooh. Oh, I love that cactus too, it's so soft. Okay, this one's kind of spicy, so you gotta be careful, but I like it though. This thing really is just 
very tender meat, so much flavor as well. Well, wow, this chili verde is very interesting because the ones I've had in other Mexican restaurants were darker than this. I mean, as long as it tastes great, that's all that matters, right? It's like the chili, tomatillo, the acidity of it, just a little bit spicy. Another very hearty dish. And like I said, the food style of this restaurant is supposed to be a little bit more home style. So that's why you're gonna find a lot of dishes like this with the pork stew, beef stew, uh, potatoes, rice, and beans. Wow, this birria looks pretty interesting too because the ones I've had at restaurants and taco stands, the meat was very shredded. And this one, it looks like it comes in these big beef stew chunks. Mm. Tastes just like a birria. Yeah, this is definitely the chunkiest beef birria I've had. But it's not hard beef. Thankfully, it's a very tender piece of beef that you're eating. And it's one of their highlight items here. So if you guys like birria, then you should take this and maybe even wrap it in some of these tortillas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe that's what I'm gonna do right now. So you, you can eat your food so many different ways. That's why they give you the tortilla. So you can put the birria in, you can put the chili verde, the rojo, any meats. So awesome, huh? So this pozole is supposed to have the, the corn inside as well as the pieces of pork. Wow, that looks so amazing. Wow, it's very hot. Tastes like one of those mom's made homemade Mexican soups. And if you want it a little bit spicier, it does come with the spicy sauce and I heard you're supposed to kind of take it a little easy with this because it really is spicy. Oh yeah, I feel it. Look at that, that's chicken mole. Okay, I think I'm gonna get this this time around. Ooh. Oh yeah, chilaquiles, my favorite thing for sure. I'm not gonna pass this up. There's not way too many items up there, so you can realistically try a little bit of everything up there. I mean, it's not like going to a Vegas style buffet where it's like you can only get to a fourth of it or something. Now this isn't as fresh as the ones that you would order like right off the menu where the chips are still kind of crunchy. That's one of the things I guess about chilaquiles is that if it kind of stays there for a little bit, you're tasting more of the sauce that's around the chips that are soft. But still, I mean, flavor-wise, it's very delicious. So it's like a red sauce, not the green sauce chilaquiles. Mm. See, even comes with some eggs too. Oh yeah, you eat that with your chilaquiles, right? Well, those eggs are pretty good, wow. This is definitely gonna get your hands and your mouth dirty. See, watch. See that? Mmm. And if you guys don't know what mole is, it's a very popular Oaxacan Mexican food. It is kind of an acquired taste because there is a flavor to it that some people like and some people don't. It's uh, like a dark, kind of like a chocolatey sauce that's, uh, I mean, it's a little bit sweet, but also more like, uh, has like a cocoa flavor, kind of bitter too. But I've already gotten used to it. You know, I've tried some really good moles out there. And this is definitely a very classic mole taste. Like I said, put your tortillas to good use because you can even take the chicken from the mole and stuff it in there so you have like a mole chicken taco. I learned that as a trick at another Mexican restaurant. Totally works. Remember, any way you like. That's why you got the tortillas and you got the chips here. I think I'm gonna move on to some of these now. Yeah, so much heavy items, a lot of meat, so gotta balance it out with some fruits, right? And maybe some of this too, it's like a rice pudding? Oh, purple jello, oh yeah, never had this before. I mean, I can't say that it's on the level of some of the best Mexican food I've had, especially out in LA. I mean, uh, you're getting like the chili verde, the birria, as well as chicken mole. These are some of the items you have to focus on here and they're very good. Like it does taste very home style. So yes, come on down here to Cocina Azteca Grill. In Placentia, they have really great parking as well. Staff is really awesome. Very cozy atmosphere. I think you're gonna like it. Well, there you have it with my 100 hour journey through the buffet food scene in Orange County, California. Have you guys been to any of these all you can eat buffets? 
drop that comment because I would love to hear your story and your suggestions. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you all in the next food adventure.